What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and in this video we've got something huge for you. We're actually on our way right now to go pick up an old prison friend of mine who's just getting released from jail today. Now the crazy thing about this guy is he actually was on an old After Prison Show video that I did like over a year ago but unfortunately he ended up getting locked up again and had to serve an additional year. But this morning, damn, damn we gotta turn around. We gotta go get that dude right there. That's for Uncle Billy. Is that really? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Wait. That's it. Yep. That's Uncle Billy right there. Uncle Billy! What's up? Hey, how you doing? Hey, that's, uh, yo. <laughs> What's going on, Billy? Hey, my man. Holy crap. How you doing, old boy? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey. Man, we haven't seen you in forever. No shit, yeah. <laughs> we got Uncle Billy. Hey, there you go. We got Uncle Phil. Where are you going, man? I ain't, I ain't going out with Bob. I ain't going nowhere. No, nah, have you eaten? Yeah, I mean. You sure? Yeah. We were going down this way, right? We're going to go pick somebody up from jail right now. Oh, no, no, go, go. Yeah, and then we, we passed you when I said, oh my God, there's Uncle Billy right there. You interview him when they get out? Yeah, we're going to go interview him right hey, now. Yeah, good, go. I don't need him, but. Nah, you take both of them. Yeah. That's for you. Sure. We haven't seen you forever, and I know. Wow. I'll come to owe you. Nah, you don't owe me nothing. Sure. But you use that money to do something good, man. Hey, thank you a lot. Look, take care of yourself, Uncle Billy. Yeah, you're gonna get the guy in jail. Tell him God bless you. Definitely. We're going to go pick up a buddy of mine who's getting released today, and then we passed Uncle Billy right there riding down the street on his bicycle. There's his bike right there. Uncle Billy said he's been staying with Ronnie. That's our good friend as well. For those of you who don't know who Uncle Billy is or who Ronnie is, I'm gonna include links in this video to those videos. All right, we gotta go pick somebody up from jail now. So we're about to pull up to the jail right now to pick up this old prison friend of mine who again has been in a video here on After Prison Show a while back. And it's just gonna be really good catching up with this guy, especially on the day that he's getting released after serving an additional year locked up. There's the police station right there. Hello, police. And then there is the jail. We got some guys standing outside of there. There's our buddy right there. He's already out. Oh my God. I haven't seen this guy in forever. Look at this guy. Just made some new friends Dude, already. Great. I just got out. Oh my god! Dude, it's great to see you, man. Hey, man. It's Dude, great to free see. Free at last. Free at last. I ain't got one on me now. I'm sorry. I don't this think is... I got them on. Here's me. That's a one-way street this way. Oh, uh, yeah. whoops. My bad. All right, we're getting it out of here. We're just, we're just picking our friend up. We're ready to enjoy the free world. Come on, Yanni, get in the car. We're out of here. We're leaving. Well, you know, that was kind of short-lived. I mean, I, I wanted to enjoy and bask in the moment, but... Uh, You're getting... I, we better get the hell out of here before they, they lock me up again. They might write you a charge. Yanni, you're free! Oh, man, these pants are so tight, I put on 30 pounds, man. I feel like I feel like they cut, cut off the circulation to my wiener. How does it feel to be released? I don't know. I'm kind of in a state of shock right now because I, I really... You know, up until I, I called you a couple hours ago, I thought that I was going to do another uh, maybe month and a half, two months in, in Portsmouth. So this is, uh, you know, they ran my time concurrent. You never know. You know, you always, at least me, I'm always preparing. I believe in the power of negative thinking. Right. Some people believe in the power of positive thinking. I always try and and uh, and think that the absolute worst is going to happen. So if something like this does happen, it feels like I just won the freaking lottery. And so, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. The sights, the smells, the... How long were you standing out there waiting for us to get out here? Oh, I just walked out the door. I walked out the door and I saw uh, Renee and then Cherie, and you know, I was like, I was, I was resolute that I wasn't going to smoke cigarettes, but you know, that didn't happen. That didn't last long. <laughs> uh, you know, it was crazy because when we pulled up there to get you, that guy like immediately came out the door and was like, "You guys got to move. You're parked illegally." I know we can't. I can't stay out of trouble. I mean, I can't even get out of jail without these people trying to drag me. Dude, but that's crazy, man. You're looking great. Yeah, well, other than, you know, I put on 30 pounds. I, you know, I, I was about a 160, 162 shredded when I got locked up. And, you know, I've been down in the bowels 
of what's called the 87, which is the old side of the, the jail. Old side of the jail. So I've been in, I've been with about 15 guys in what is about the size of about half of a single wide trailer. And uh, there's no sunlight. You get gym an hour a week. You're pale. You're super pale. Well, I mean, I haven't had. I haven't, this is the first time I've seen sunlight in a year. How does it I'm feel? Like a mole burrowing out of the ground. Like, how does it feel actually walking out those front doors? What's the first thought going through your mind walking out those front doors? Oh, uh, don't screw this up. Make it to the car. I just, uh, I, it's indescribable. It's indescribable. It is awesome. And l let's talk about what you're actually wearing. Is this the same clothes that you got locked up in? Yeah, so this is what I was locked up in. This actually fit. Uh, you know, it didn't look like, uh, you know, Richard Simmons' leotard. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't yeah. look that bad, to be honest with yeah. you. Yanni, it is so good to see you again. For those of you who may remember Yanni from a video we did a long time ago called Funny Millionaire Prison Scooter Guy. I featured Yanni in that video. You remember when we did that video? I do, I do. That was probably... I don't know. That was over a year ago. For sure. Yeah, it was like a year and a half a year ago and a half or something. Ago. A long time ago. But for those of you who don't know who Yanni is, Yanni is a good friend of mine. We served time in the last prison that I was at. We were locked up for what? Maybe like a year and a half together? Yeah, yeah, at least. Uh, yeah, at least a year and a half. Dude. Sure. Well, again, it's just awesome seeing you, awesome being able to be with you. I mean, literally, as soon as you're coming out of the door from the jail, and again, after serving, uh, you know, an additional year, you're free, you literally just walked out the door. What is the first thing that you want to do? Uh, an Asian hooker. <laughs> Obviously, I can't get you laid right now. I mean, can I get you some food? Do you want something to eat? Like, is there any kind of food that you've just been craving? Like, something that you just haven't, that you've really been wanting? <sighs> God, I just, this is like so, uh, I, I just, you know, like I said, 20 minutes, yes, uh, yeah, food, something other than uh, uh, SOS. What is SOS? Shit on a shingle. You know shit on a shingle. Yeah. I know what it is, of course, but I want you to explain to those. Oh, okay, so SOS is, um, it's like third-rate dog meat mixed with uh, <laughs> watered-down gravy, the state sort of reproduction of uh, biscuits and gravy. Mm. But it, buddy, it is a long way from biscuits and gravy. It's more like a piece of unleavened bread, unleavened with bread. toilet water, and some chunks of like uh, sewer rat. Right now, I'm completely overwhelmed with choices. Is it? Is it? You know, do I want to? Do I want to sit down and eat and grab a steak? Do I want to just? You know, get? You know, I love Wendy's. I love Chick Fil A. You know, a double, a, you know. So you want, I mean, we we got a Chick-fil-A pretty close. Do you want some Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A would be great. All right, that's where we're going to. God, I didn't get released on a Sunday. <laughs> you can't get released on a Sunday that's anyway. That's true, that's true. Um, do you got to see your probation today? Is that something you have to do? Yes. All right, so we'll get some food, and then we're going to take Yanni to go see his probation officer. Okay. Uh, the number one, can you sub out the fries for... Uh... Uh, you can get any of these signs right here, so the all right. That's a dollar extra. Yeah. Whatever you want. Okay. Um, I just, I'll just take the, uh, the fruit cup. Okay. And what would you like to drink? Um, Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Wow. You know, I just went to the bathroom. My first, uh, the first time using a public restroom. First time using the bathroom since being released. And just talk about that. Like, you don't got somebody peeping over your shoulder trying to see if you're okay in there? Yeah, there's a lot of wood watchers. <laughs> in the, uh, you know, they have weight watchers. And the, Wood watchers uh, in jail. There's always somebody trying to get a peek of the goods. Uh, yeah, that's nice. It's nice to have a little bit of privacy. It's nice to see some ceramic. Everything in jail is, is, is stainless steel and yeah. cold to the touch. It's nice to be able to, to turn the faucet instead of and, having to push a button. That, yeah, in five seconds, just when you start to get your hands wet, and you start to lather up, it, it cuts off. You know, that's it's the little things, man. Like you say, it's the little things that you don't even think would mean that damn much. A bathroom. I see you're quite the little aristocrat. You just dare to be different, Jeff. You couldn't do Chick Fil A. You had to. I got chicken regardless. It just come from you know the Chinese place. Well, listen, I got to tell you, man. The uh, you know fines in Chesapeake, seventeen hundred dollars. My bond in Portsmouth, twenty thousand dollars. Chick Fil A sandwich after a year in jail, priceless. Freaking priceless. <laughs> I mean, this just makes it all worthwhile. You will never appreciate the taste of a whole chicken breast like you will when you've been locked up for a year. I mean, this is gonna be good. <laughs> In jail, 
you know, we're at the point, point now in Chesapeake where to cut down costs, you, you only get two hot meals a day. You get the breakfast and you get the dinner. You get bag lunches every day for lunch, and it's uh, it's like a processed turkey loaf, two slices, a pack of mustard, and a piece of bread. And that's, that's your lunch with two, like, little cookies. Um, so even, like, you know, something something as small as this, Polynesian sauce, Chipotle sauce. Do they have chicken sandwiches or you know? About to blow the tongue, my, my tongue right out of my throat. You're about to have a what do you call that? A taste? An explosion in my mouth. What do you call that thing? Uh, a flavor gasm? Uh, yeah, something like that. Is that what they're calling it these days? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's not the right I mean, term. I'm sure a lot of things are passing me by in the last year. You know? They actually have a virtual reality place over here that. now. They have the, My how the times have changed in the year that you've been going. I know. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. You know, now I'm worried about getting back. You know, I've put on so much weight since I've been locked up. Well, you always worked out, you know, and you were always in good health. So, you know, because you were in the jail, I can understand you're not getting a lot of wreck, especially being in the old section of the jail where you were at. You guys didn't get any wreck, did you? One hour a week. One hour a week. You would go to, they had a gym down there you guys would go to, right? Yeah, but you see, you had to, you couldn't just, I mean, if you wanted to do it, do it, do it there were three things that you had to, you could do, you could do at the gym. One, you could, you could play, there's a little half-court basketball court. Uh, there's like a little, uh, little exercise bike and a dip bar. But the only way that you could have access to uh, nail clippers was at the gym. Like, the, the COs or the deputies wouldn't give them to you while you were in 87 because they were worried about you turning it into a shank or a weapon. So you had to be, basically, you had to be under supervision in order to use nail clippers. So that's that's ten or fifteen minutes right there. You want to clip your nails you know, at least once every couple of weeks. Right. And then book card. In order to get books, now I mean I had a lot of books sent to me, but if I you know if I you, know, you tear through a lot of books and you don't have much to do, so the book cards there. So you know you you write the book for fifteen minutes. They take care of your nails, and now you've got twenty minutes for the gym. Now, what did you do while you were in the gym? Did you play basketball? I played, I played basketball. Because I remember in, while we were in prison together, we played a lot of basketball together. We played a lot of sports together overall. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I remember how hyped up you were about soccer. Soccer. Was, I had never really played that much. I played a, a little bit, but you... But you, you enjoyed it as well, though. I loved it. I yeah. mean, it was the greatest burn ever. I mean, you talk about cardio. I mean, it, it changed my religion. You know, I played football in high school. That's why I always made fun of the guys playing soccer. But when you actually, when you play prison soccer... We played prison any sport. Basketball especially. You know, what the people may not understand is that, you know, soccer on the street, I haven't played a whole lot of it. I've played plenty of, plenty of prison soccer, and it it makes football look like a joke. I mean, because that's basically what it is. It's tackle. Basically, any sport. How many fights, how many fights busted out on the field? Endless fights. But any sport in prison is going to be basically, you should just probably call it tackle whatever. So it's tackle basketball. Combat sport. Combat, yeah. <laughs> MMA basketball. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Remember that guy, B? I remember I had to throw him out. You know, you remember part of the deal when we played in our soccer league is we had to alternate referees? Referee, yeah. And this dude was like, he was like a freaking cyborg. I mean, he was a big guy. He was just like a Terminator. You can't negotiate with him. You can't reason with him. You know, he's just going to keep coming and coming and coming. And God forbid, you know, you stole the ball from him. Because if you did, the next thing that's coming is a left hook. Or a gang war. Yeah, or a gang war. <laughs> I had to throw him out of a game. Were you on the field when I had to throw him out? Probably, yeah. I can't remember who. I think he swung on like Mike Napper. I can't say that, Mike. I can't remember who it was. I mean, he swung on a lot of guys out there. But I threw him out of the game. He, he ate it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, dude, I, I have to do the right thing here. I got to have some kind of, there has to be some sort of order on the field. So I said, I'm sorry, D, but, you know, you got to go. And he just took it. I was stunned. I mean, he had guys that he respected. I mean, he respected me. He respected you. Yeah. But then for the majority of it, and it wasn't because we were big, bad guys in there. I mean, we were just solid individuals while locked up. Well, you know, I think that's another thing about prison that sort of separates the men from the boys. You know, you and I marched to, our, to a beat of a very fair, our own particular drummer. We weren't the biggest, baddest guys in there. No, but we weren't trying to fit in either. Yeah. You know, I wasn't trying to be something that I wasn't. 
You know, I wasn't pretending to bang. I wasn't pretending to be hood. I wasn't pretending to fit in with a crowd that I didn't fit in with. You know, I think guys will respect you a lot more if you're, if you're a young know, man. You're, you're right. So what was the last meal that you ate while locked up? Chilling out. And describe what that was like. Chilling out? Well, a lot like, you know, I described the SOS earlier, which is like, I mean, you wouldn't feed it. You wouldn't feed it to your worst enemy. You wouldn't feed it to a dog. I mean, this, I don't know where this meat come from, comes from. I don't know if it's like, you know, they've got grave robbers that are extracting meat from, you know, rotting corpses or what. I mean, but this stuff is absolutely I, I, just just the bottom of the barrel, just grade the rat meat. And um, they use it for everything. They use it for the SOS, the shit on machine. They use it for the beef stew. They use it for the chili mac. They use it for a lot of stuff. I mean, and it's like, you know, the sweat meat. Have you ever, have you ever yeah. told them what sweat meat is? Oh, yeah. Well, go ahead and I still don't know what sweat meat is. I mean, there's no way to describe exactly what, what is the, sweat meat. What the comp it's meat that sweats. <laughs> no, that's another thing. Like in jail, the terminology, it's always, you know, it's, it, the stuff is bad enough on its own. But then people ascribe or give these nicknames to food that makes it even worse. I mean, you know, it's bad, well, it's bad enough that I'm eating processed, like, processed turkey rectums. You know, do you have to call it sweat meat? Mystery meat. Mystery meat. Meat rock. Shit on a shingle. Meat rock. Meat rock is a luxury item. I actually had a contract. Meat rock is something that they give. It's, it's, a, it's a renal diet. If people have kidney issues or they have cancer or they're, you know, they're dying. Then they give them, they give them a, they, they provide them with a diet that, that I guess is higher in protein so they can retain, you know, some of their muscle, mass or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but I actually I actually paid somebody ten bucks a week for their meat rock and one hard boiled egg in the morning. Look, do you see anything you hey, want? Are you sure it's anything? Pink? That's your color? So we got you some clothes. How'd you feel to be able to get like some some new it's fresh gear, man? I mean it feels great, dude. I mean this still this still has that jail funk. Where to now? We gotta <laughs> go she's cheap. We gotta go to your probation? Hmm? No. Huh? Yeah. 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 It's called um, uh, Steve Wilco. <laughs> yeah, you ever seen it? <laughs> the next place is where? To probation? Yeah, so yeah, I, I've got 24 hours to report to probation and parole. Uh, I'm not on parole, but I'm on probation. Uh, if I don't, then I'll be violated and I'll be right back in jail. So yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Well, let's, let's go ahead and get on that. Critical part of the process. So we're getting ready to get to the probation office right now. Like, what are your feelings and thoughts about going to do this? Um, I, mean, I hope it doesn't take long. Uh, I mean, look, this the reason I'm the reason I'm the reason I'm locked up is for a probation violation. So my last experience with the uh, adult probation and parole office is you're violated. Um, so it's got a bad taste so in your I, mouth already. Real bad. Oh my God, we just saw that guy. He was getting released with you. We saw that guy. He just got released. He's just coming home oh, from. Oh yeah, that old that's old Playboy. That's that's crazy. <laughs> old Playboy. So that. obviously you got a lot of guys who are coming here as well on their first day being released. It must have been a big day to get released. How many people got released with you? Do you think? Uh, uh he was in there with me. There were three other people. Um, there was a guy named. Uh, there was actually a guy named Joe, who was uh who was from like Boston. And he was a big in the motorcycles. He, he had done a week for a DUI. Um, and then there was another guy named Kentucky who was in there for, for meth. He was 6'9". I saw him when he got locked up. He was 6'9", 125 pounds. I mean, this dude was, he looked like a freaking giraffe, like in the face. Like his eyes like went left and went right. And they were like on the side of his head. Like he had eyes in his temples. It was unbelievable. But uh, yeah, now he's he's at a uh, he's a chunky 150. He's a chunky 69 150. So the jail helped him get back a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, big time. Well, you ready to go do this? Let's do it, man. <clears throat> I'm not going in there with you. I guess I just I just wait right here for you. You got everything you need. Do you need to take anything in there with you? Just yourself, I guess. That's it. Just this wide ass right here. Hey, good luck, man. Appreciate it. It's official. I'm a free man. What is that? That is the. Uh, these are the. Uh, these are my post-release supervision conditions. There's eleven of them. 
Uh, one, I'll obey all federal, state, local laws and ordinances. Two, I'll report any arrest. Three, maintain regular employment. Four, will report in person by telephone or as otherwise instructed by my probation and parole officer. Let's get out and of here. And on and on and on and on and on. I've got my signature and there's the date. Well, that's good. And that's it. That's it. They want me to call back in a week. And uh, at that point, they will uh, assign me a probation officer. Right now, I don't have one. My probation officer retired, so they're giving me a new probation officer. It only took about 30 minutes, so that ain't too bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, usually my experience there is, uh, you know, two, three hours. That's that was that was that was usually par for the course when I uh, reported probation before. So to get in and out in 30 minutes is just good. Things just keep on happening. Well, it is day one, so it's all downhill from here. <laughs> what do they say? What, how's that saying go? Uh, you've got the glow. I got the glow. You know that's what they say when you get released. Uh, is uh, I think that's that's what they say when you uh, when you're pregnant too. Yes, I am shining, shining like a star. Well, uh, I'm pumped. God, I mean, it is, this, is, this is this is you know you're in you're in a deprivation chamber, man, for a year. At least I was, and uh, you know just in the in the depths. I mean, in the sewers and the bowels of the beast man so to be out here and the sun is shining i mean it is a freaking gorgeous day you know i appreciate you know everything that you've done joe you know staying in touch with me while i've been locked up uh your friendship you know helping me out getting uh getting a change of clothes uh you know helping me get back on my feet man it means the world to me i'm indebted to you uh you know you have my undying loyalty and friendship forever man oh yeah well it means a lot to me and i mean I, I think the thing that means the most to me is just seeing you back out here with this fresh start and i'm just hoping that this is the time when you can actually get it together you're one of the smartest and most like personable people i've ever met in my life and it's just really great to, get, to have you back out here and i want to i want to be able to do what i can to motivate you to to actually do good this time. Yeah, I mean that's that's extremely high praise coming from you because I know how selective you are in terms of you know who you spend time with, who you hang out with, um, and and especially considering how well you've done since you've you've been out. I mean it's all about sticking around the right people, staying away from the wrong people, putting yourself in good positions. I mean it's like uh, well you got to have that positive foundation to build from, and I want to be a part of that with your journey. And this is only. You know, we've been out here now for probably a couple of hours at this point. I mean, maybe like almost three hours maybe. Yeah. But you think about it, this is only the very beginning. You've got to get a job. You've got to get back to work. You've got to get back on your feet. What is your living situation like? Like, tell me where... Are you going to be staying with your parents, right, your family? So, so okay, so I, you know, I, I've got, I've got two great. My, my mom and my stepdad um, are absolute. Uh, they're absolute saints. You know, they've, 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 they've rode with me the whole way. Uh, this is it. I mean, they've made it very clear, and in no uncertain terms, that you know, this is the last rodeo. This is the last shot. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna do whatever they can to, to help me out within limits, within reason. Are you living with them? I mean, like, where are you going to be staying at? Yeah, so I have to find a place to stay. They don't, uh, you know, they're in their mid-60s, and they want to enjoy sort of their, their twilight years. And right. And my mother's retired, and, and so, the, yeah, the mandate is you need to find a place um, as soon as possible. Now, you've mentioned, like, Oxford House. There's this place called the Anesmus House. And what are these? Um, these are halfway houses? Yeah, and, and, of course, I'm not, you know, look, I've been locked up with... You know, with criminals for the last you know year of my life, the last thing I want to do is you know be surrounded by a bunch of drug addicts living three deep in a room because that's what you do at these places, you know. You and don't you don't to... need to be around that anyways, considering the fact that you know you're trying to keep yourself clean. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I mean, I, I need to be around people that are. Uh, I mean. I need to be around people that are that are positive. They're doing the right thing. I don't necessarily need to. Uh, uh, yeah, you want to share your your strength, experience, and hope. That's part of the AA. That's part of the NA philosophy. But um, you know, I'm not really in a position right now to, you know, help. I, I have to kind of take care of myself. Right. And uh, and again, you know, being around people that are that are sort of in that danger zone, that are newly sober. Um, I don't think is a. Uh, you know, I don't I don't think that's that's going to do me any favors. So. Yeah, I need to find a place to stay. I don't know if it's going to be a room for rent. I don't know if it's going to be, going to be an apartment. I mean, I'm limited in terms of budget. Um, and I, I, I kind of need to find a place within within like a week or so. I, well, I can already tell this is a, this is a massive step up. Wow. Oh, 
community. That's your hardwood floors. Oh, it's kind of got. Going up there. You're not scared of the cat, are you? Oh, that's a cat. I thought that was a little Doberman. Yeah, I'm terrified of cats, dude. No, I'm not scared of cats at all. Hey, what's his, what's her name? Her? Oh, Aggie. Aggie. What is she, like, you a big Texas A&M fan? Uh, we adopted her. Okay. And, um, you know, that was her name. We tried to change her name, but she didn't want her name changed, so we just... I mean, I didn't think cats even knew what their name was anyway. I mean, you could name him, like, Mr. Jones, and it would... It's still not going to come, right? <laughs> so what do you think? You live in a studio. It's a studio it's apartment. A, it's awesome. Yeah, it is but it's literally a studio apartment. Awesome. Yep. This is it, huh? This is where we film at. This is where you've been cranking out the video. Boy, because I mean, when I, the last time I was out, I think you had a couple thousand subs. Uh, the videos were, I mean, I know that you were like really scrambling in terms of equipment and uh, I mean, really like just starting at the ground floor, like grassroots stuff. And now you've got, uh, <clears throat> I mean, this is like, this is like pro style stuff over here, man. I'm blown away. Hell yeah. Well, welcome to After Prison Show. But more importantly, welcome home, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone out there, you know, to have an audience, to have a, uh, to have a platform, uh, and to just be able to sort of document my climb up the ladder to success, it's going to be a hell of a ride. Uh, I want you to be there with me every step of the way because it's going to be freaking awesome.